Hey guys, Southeast Soft Wash here. We're adding to our series of how to's. We've got a really popular how to clean roof video. It's taken me a while to get around to doing a driveway video. I've been waiting to have a good driveway to show you in the video. My good friend Bobby Walker has got a video. I'm gonna put the link to his down in the comments or the description below how to clean a driveway. He hits a lot of the same points in there, but we wanted to do our own just for the sake of having ours on our channel. So uh, he's got some really good stuff on his. Hopefully I won't forget anything on this video. Uh, I came out here the other day. This driveway is very, very nasty. It's about 15 years old. If you look over here to the sidewalk, you can see I've already cleaned the sidewalk and you can see the difference. Uh, really bad night and day difference so this one's gonna be dramatic which is what we're looking for especially for the sake of this video so we're gonna go through some things uh, what to watch out for do's and don'ts stay tuned we'll make it as brief as possible but it's, it's probably gonna run a little bit long so we'll be right back okay so the goal of what we're doing here is to be efficient and to get a really good result for the customer and the way we do it provides that let me show you the wrong way to do it, or at least the results of the wrong way to do it. Go over here and look over the fence. Uh, we've got the pool pad here, and you can tell someone years ago took a wand and spent a whole Saturday and tried to clean this, and probably the only thing they wound up with was a really sore back and not a great result. So we definitely don't want to do this. Uh, the professional way to do it is to use a surface cleaner, which we have a 20 inch surface cleaner. So we'll get that down in a moment. Uh, but before you begin the job, the things that you need to look for, um, I'm, I'm trying to find a good spot here to show you. There's actually a, a gutter downspout over here coming off the back of the house that's hitting the concrete back there. And I can almost guarantee you that that spot, because of the excessive rain hitting it for years and years, every time it rains, a bunch of water's coming down that gutter, there's going to be a worn out spot right there below that downspout. So you need to watch for things like that. Uh, identify them and let your customers know beforehand that you didn't create that. We've actually had callbacks from people that said, hey, you damaged my concrete. I, I've noticed this funky spot. Well, it was so dirty before they couldn't tell it. Now you've cleaned it and you've exposed some of that damaged uh, area, some of those damaged areas. Let's walk right over here and we'll show you a spot. Right here, we've got a little bit of exposed aggregate, uh, the stone that's mixed into the, the mix. You can see it right here as well. Now, what this is from is just wear and tear, general wear and tear. But you can have that if it was not poured correctly, if the cream layer on top, what's known as the latency layer, uh, wasn't poured correctly, it has low PSI tensile strength. And so depending on who poured it, when they poured it, how good of a quality job they did, you can have damaged areas and it, it may not be very visible because again this is really really dirty and so until we clean it you may not be able to see those areas so try to look for stuff before you get started and let your homeowners your customers know look i'm here to clean it there's no magic that i can do to leave you with a brand new slab you gotta understand this is a 15 20 year old pour of concrete now we're just here to clean it okay so don't let them back you into a corner and make you think that this thing has to look immaculate when you leave. It's got to be clean. That's what you're here to do. Uh, let's look right over here and we'll show you something else. When I was here the other day doing the sidewalk, I sprayed this section right here down with my pre-treatment. So you can tell the difference between where I'm standing here versus here, okay? And we were out here playing around. I actually ran the surface cleaner right there for just a second and we cleaned a strip over there trying to get some did something for y'all to see in this video. So pre-treating the concrete is gonna allow us to do a couple things. Go a lot faster with our surface cleaner. It's also gonna give us a better end result and finish so that when we get done, it all looks uniform and it looks good. Uh, you don't always have to pre and post treat, but we highly recommend you pre-treating your concrete. It helps a lot. So uh, the way we pre-treat, when I'm talking about pre-treatment, what I'm using there is a sodium hypochlorite based mixture. I'm going to use about a three to four percent SH and I'm going to put a little bit of surfactant in there. I don't want to put too much surfactant because if I do, when I start running the surface cleaner, it's going to create sud CD out here and it's going to look like a laundromat. And then I have a hard time really seeing where I'm trying to go with the surface cleaner. It's kind of like a push mower. So you kind of need to be able to see your previous pass. That way you can do it efficiently and prevent too much overlapping. You don't really want to overlap the tips 
uh, it can dig in and, and etch the concrete. Really old concrete can be brittle. Really new concrete can still be kind of soft. So be careful when you're doing very fresh or very old concrete. But no matter what the age, it can be etched if you use too much PSI on this. So you need to be able to adjust your PSI with a ball valve or some adjustment method. Uh, so watch out for those things. You don't want to score this stuff up. Now, if you do score it, it is fixable. It's not probably ever going to look 100% right, but there's ways that you can fix it using chemicals and you kind of feather that stuff back out and make it look a lot better. When we're pre-treating this slab, some things I've got to watch for, I don't want to get any overspray on the grass. Now, some of that's not really avoidable, but if I do get some overspray in my pre-treatment process, I'm going to want to uh, wash that grass down because we don't want to damage any of their lawn. We don't want to yellow up the edges, you know, three or four inches out from the slab. So take some water, flood all that stuff down, make sure that you're not damaging the lawn while you're here. Um, another thing to watch out for, we got traffic out here on this road a lot, um, runoff, okay? So depending on your locale, you gotta be very careful about runoff. Now, the Clean Water Act is federal, so that covers the entire United States. You're not supposed to have any chemicals and water leaving the property. So if you've got chemical runoff and it's going out in the street, down a storm drain, you're in violation of the Clean Water Act. So you need to look into reclaim systems uh, that capture that runoff and put it back into a tank that you can then dump somewhere on the property. As long as it stays on the property, you're okay. Uh, the stuff we're using is not really gonna hurt anything, but we do have to be legal. We do wanna make sure that we're within the bounds of what we can and can't do. Also, just a, a tip, you know, always try to clean your low spot first because if you've got this massive driveway and they've got a low place, if you clean that last, by the time you get there, you've got a massive puddle that you're trying to fight. So find out where the low spot's at, do it first. That'll help you out a lot as well. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna pause this. I'm gonna grab my soft wash wine. We're gonna pre-treat down this big section here behind us. And then we're gonna fire the uh, pressure washer up and we'll get to work. Be right back. Okay, so we've got our soft wash system set up to apply about a three to 4% mixture down here on this pad. Something to keep in mind, this is very important, is PPE. So when we're applying here, especially if it's really hot outside, we spray this pad, all that is vaporizing and we're breathing it in. Very good idea, highly recommend you wear a respirator. Now I don't have one on because I threw ours away, they were ready to be changed out. And right now with COVID, you can't get them. So we're just gonna have to make do and surfer through. So uh, get a 3M respirator, make sure you keep those cartridges changed out. They're organic vapor filter cartridges. We recommend using those for roof cleaning and driveway pretreatments because you're standing above the surface. And so all that gas is coming right here to your face. Another thing is uh, waterproof footwear. Make sure you've got some good shoes, some good boots on. We're not gonna get soaking wet, but I do wanna have some good waterproof footwear. I don't want a SH mixture getting splashed up, soaked into my tennis shoes and sitting on my feet very long. So once you got all that stuff taken care of, uh, eyewear is another good one, but the top two for me are respirator and footwear. When I uh, treat this section here, so what I'm gonna do is turn my wand vertically so that I don't get overspray on the grass here. So watch how I do that. Instead of being a, a horizontal fan, I'll turn it vertically. Paint my edges, it's just kind of like we do on the roof cleaning, we wanna paint that edge. Now, I did get some overspray on that grass and so we're gonna wash that back off with some water here in just a second. When we run the surface cleaner, it's gonna dump water itself. So that's gonna dilute all this runoff down, but we're just worried about the overspray that we get on the lawn. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and treat this pad down. Show you how we do that. We don't really need to flood it. We just need to get a good coat down here on this pad. All this that we see here is organic growth. So this is really gonna help a lot. As you could see back over there earlier, a massive difference in just soft washing it. So once we put this down, it's gonna help a whole lot with the surface cleaning process. Come up here and let me show you something else. Now right here, we've got a rust stain. Uh, I'm not sure if that's gonna pick up in camera. Let me look. Yeah, it is. Okay, so right here, we've got a rust stain now we can remove that but the standard process is not going to fix that that would take another chemical uh, so in our area most of our homeowners don't really care about stuff like that 
we're just going to clean it and go on but if you're in a really high-end neighborhood that would be a separate chemical probably f9 bark or some kind of a rust remover and you can get that up so we're not going to worry with that just because of our market so uh, we'll pause this video i'll go ahead and treat the rest of this section down and we'll be right back but as you can see now that we're over here a little closer just look at the sidewalk that we've already done versus this pad out here massive difference so this is going to look really good once we get finished we'll be right back okay guys we're back here at the back of the truck we've got our pressure washer filled up with fuel ready to go we've got our water source plumbed up and it's fired up so we're, we're feeding water to the unit and uh, we use a four gallon a minute pressure washer. So they make bigger ones, they make smaller ones. This is really where you need to start and go up from here. So at least a four, five and a half is a good size, eight's a good size as well. Just depends on kind of what money you wanna spend. But our four gallon mint machine has made us a lot of money and we run a 20 inch surface cleaner with that. So let's go look at the surface cleaner. Okay, here's our trusty 20 inch whirl away. Uh, this thing's about three years old. It's really long in the tooth, but it does a great job. They're not that expensive. It's about $350 for this unit right here. And the four gallon will push it fine. It really helps that we pre-treat all of our concrete as well. So that allows us to kind of cheat and run a slightly larger surface cleaner than we might normally would be able to run. So come in here a little bit closer and we'll show you some things to watch out for when you're running the surface cleaner. As you're going along cleaning and you get done, you disconnect, be careful about dropping this thing down. If dirt gets inside of this quick connect, it's going to go straight to your tips. You're going to have clogged tips, then you got to take them off and re-clean them. Uh, these tips do wear out, and when I'm talking about the tips, this is what we're talking about. Up under here, there are two tips. Now, they make some that have three, make some that have four. These tips have to be cleaned. Basically, what we have is a spinning pressure washer bar, okay? So this thing, if they get clogged, you gotta take them off and clean them. You do need to change them out every so often because they do wear out. A lot of people think that this is some kind of a scrubber brush, it's not. All this spray skirt here is for is just to keep overspray from getting us soaking wet as we're working. So let's get connected. I'm gonna go up here and fire it up and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're fired up, we're running back there. This is one of the handiest tools you can have on your truck. What this is is a high pressure ball valve. So it allows me to have a cutoff point here so that I don't have to keep going back and forth to the truck, cutting the engine on and off if I need to disconnect this. All I gotta do is cut it off, pull the trigger to relieve the pressure, and quick connect it back off. Now this thing does another, another uh, task for me that I really like, and that's bulk rinsing, okay? So, as I'm cleaning this pad, I'm gonna go in small sections and I've gotta get that dirty water off the pad so that it doesn't settle back down in there. And I'm gonna use this to rinse away all that dirty water. You don't wanna to try to do this massive concrete area and then go back and rinse it because what's gonna happen, all that dirt is gonna settle back down into the pores and then you just about have to surface clean it again. So try to rinse it while it's still wet. It'll make life a lot easier for you. So let's get connected back up to this thing and we'll fire it up.
I don't know if you can see it in the video, but that surface cleaner is shaking pretty violently. That means we probably got a partially clogged tip under there. So we'll pause the video, we'll check it. If we need to clean it, that's fine. You guys get to see that part of the process. It happens every once in a while, you gotta clean those tips out. So we'll pause it and be right back. But as you can tell, really good results. Come over here and we'll take a look. Night and day difference. Now I do usually like to make a pass and then come back across the same area, basically doing two passes on each section. Uh, I find that that gets a better result. Not all the time do you need to do that, but this is so dirty, it's gonna need basically two passes on everything. So we'll be right back in just a second. Hey guys, so uh, one final thing as we get to the end, maybe this clip and one more. We're gonna rinse off all this garage door area. You gotta be careful about blowing water up under the garage door. So what we're doing now is we're rinsing away all the dirty water, getting that off of this freshly clean pad. So we're gonna use the ball valve to do that. Right, now that we've got this section rinsed off, we we'll go back to the truck, cut the pressure washer off, and then we'll go over some final things. Okay guys, so we're not gonna belate the point because this is a really big pad. I think we've done enough that y'all can see, so it's just more of the same. We would continue this all the way out to the street. Uh, Jonathan just brought up a really good point. Little spot right here, not sure if you can see it. Most likely what that is is tire shine, where they parked a car and they use some of that stuff to clean their tires it will leave some residue on that pad. Now, if you look right here, get right here and look down, let them see the split screen effect. So before, after, and it was actually dirtier than this because remember we pre-treated this. So it's actually cleaner than it was already here. Uh, I can tell that there's gonna be some lines left from the surface cleaner. We're gonna fix that with, with post-treating. So I don't always post-treat, but because this thing is so nasty, we're gonna post-treat this one, which is just the same thing as we did on our pre-treat. But when we get finished with the whole thing, we'll spray down a SH mixture and just leave it. And that'll feather out all these, uh, these lines. You don't see that anymore. It's also just more professional for the customer. So another thing, I don't know if you can, let's, let's look right here. I think you can see it right here. That's from me moving the surface cleaner too quickly. Okay, now back here, I was just moving it that fast to get over to do my next row. But if you're getting those lines, you're going too fast. You've got to slow down and keep pace with the surface cleaner. Now we found out, we stopped and looked earlier that it does have some worn out tips. Uh, so Jonathan, he's holding the camera, he's brand new. He doesn't really know what worn out tips feel like because he doesn't have a baseline. He's still learning. So we're gonna change this out, get him a brand new surface cleaner. This one's pretty much ready to be retired anyway. So tomorrow he's gonna to have a brand new one and he'll be able to tell the difference. So when they wear down, they're out of balance and they don't clean as effectively. You can also scar the concrete because if you've got one tip that's worn or clogged, it's gonna force more pressure to the other tip. So that tip may have so much PSI that it gouges the concrete. So keep your tips clean, change them out regularly. We use 25025s in this one. What that is, is that's the 25 degree spray pattern and 2.5 gallons a minute. So that's 2.5 and 2.5, that would equal five gallons a minute. Now. We've only got a four gallon a minute pressure washer, but what I have found is going up to the next size tips allows a little bit more flow and the thing just seems to run a lot better. So 
we'll get this one swapped out. We may retire it and put it up as a trophy because it put in a lot of work. This thing has cleaned miles and miles and miles of concrete. So a driveway like this is pretty good size. It would take us probably uh, an hour and 20 minutes or so to do this whole thing. And we would charge, you know, maybe three, three to $400, just depending on if that's the only thing we're here on location to do. Uh, but I'm, I think that's all. I think that's all the points I wanted to cover. Thanks for watching. I'm sure I missed something. If you're a troll, go ahead and leave a comment down in the comment section. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed. Click that bell notification so you'll get notified when we post new videos. Anyway, guys, that's cleaning concrete start to finish the Southeast Soft Washway. Appreciate it.